Good evening and welcome to Truth and Justice TV. My name's Jennifer Obasaki and today we're going to be talking all about children and social services. Now, during the pandemic, there has been an increased number of children who have been referred to social services. And this can be part of the reason due to the fact that their family has been involved in incidents of domestic violence. As you know, during the pandemic, women and girls especially have been quite vulnerable because they've been locked indoors and other people, especially uh, vulnerable families, have had issues where uh, their situations and welfare may have been at risk. But the number one issue when it comes down to children is making sure that they are safe and that if you feel that there is any risk of harm to any child that you know of or within your home, take steps to make sure that they are indeed safe. So today we're not going to be um, throwing social workers under the bus, but what I'm going to be doing is talking you through some of the issues that may come up if your family is having to deal with social services and also what steps social services may take to safeguard a child that either you are in contact with or have parental responsibility for. So the first things first, a social worker is somebody who's employed by the local authority to help families and that will be somebody who is actually directly trained and employed by the local authority and their role is really to assess children and families and help them. Now some social workers deal specifically with children and others may deal with vulnerable adults and then again you may have some that deal with the elderly and within that whole spectrum Today, we're just going to be dealing with social workers who may have to deal with families and children. And you might come into contact with social services for, for a number of reasons. For example, you may have um, to make a report due to an issue of domestic violence, or you may have a referral made about you and your children due to some observations another professional may have made. And again, you may come to the attention of social services due to a report that your child may have made. And um, whatever the circumstances, the most important thing for you to do is to actually cooperate with social services. A lot of the times people become very apprehensive and defensive once social services come into their lives. Obviously, the social workers and the local authority have a lot of powers because it is their duty to safeguard any child in their care and in their area. So first things first is to make sure that you are clear about what the reason is they're coming into your life for. Is it due to a report? Is it due to um, a spurious allegation, malicious allegation, or a genuine concern? Whatever it is, the fact is you should immediately cooperate. Otherwise, it leads to you looking suspicious. <laughs> the other thing is Social workers have a wide ranging set of powers. So initially, if they feel that the child that's in your care is at risk of harm, one of the things they might ask you to do is to sign a form by consent. And that's usually called a section 20. Now, it's very important, obviously, that you are fully aware of your um, legal rights in any situation. I personally don't recommend parents signing anything without taking legal advice. And this is because at times a lot of Things are done in a hurry and it, uh, mistakes or omissions may be made. Further, sometimes incidents can be explained uh, quite uh, instantly and no need for the investigation, but you must appreciate that these professionals actually have a job to do. So look at the section 20 if you're presented with it. If you feel the need to take instant legal advice, ask for a reasonable time to do so. Okay, if you fail to sign the section 20, often you're threatened with legal proceedings. And to be quite honest with you, um, any situation where a child is immediately to be seen at risk uh, would usually lead to the local authority either using their own powers to apply to court for an emergency protection order or asking for police help where the police can use their powers to equally remove a child from the home and safeguard a child until uh, clarity can be brought to the situation. 
So first things first is you may be presented with that section 20. I would honestly say it is within your right to ask for a reasonable time to take legal advice before signing it. Or if you feel that you are comfortable with the situation, maybe it's just for you to ensure that a child is living with a, a close relative or someone whom's known to you until they clarify and investigate their situation, then you make that decision. Quite immediately, it's very important for you to know that um, anybody who uh, is subject to public law proceedings, who is a parent or is a guardian, and that's a special guardian, automatically qualifies for legal aid. And it's important for you to try to seek out legal advice quite early in the process because the most immediate thing may not be to take you to court. It may be to start the pre-proceedings process whereby they may request some assessments, investigations, information and also hold meetings around the family. So knowing exactly where you are within the auspice of uh, social workers and the local authority with regard to their inquiries and investigation is quite important. And if you're not clear, clarity may come with the assistance of legal advice uh, by your solicitor seeking clarification from them if, as to whether they're serving pre-proceedings, whether they're just making inquiries or whether they intend to go to court. So we're going to take a, quite a little short break now and when we come back we're going to be talking about what happens if you don't sign the section 20 and if social services via the local authority advise you that they intend to commence legal proceedings. See you after this short break. Welcome back. So today we're talking social services, children and court orders. So before the break, I was discussing why you might come to the attention of social services, why they may be concerned. Somebody may have reported you, your child may have made a disclosure, somebody else, another professional may have concern with the, the way your child presents, or there may just be a misunderstanding. Either way, very, very important that you cooperate. Next thing I spoke about was section 20s, where by consent, by agreement, you agree for the social services to take a level of action that might be inquiry, investigation, and to accommodate your child in a certain way. I did advise that before you sign such a form, it may be important that you take legal advice. I recommend it highly, that you be given reasonable time to take legal advice. One of the things you need to know is a lot of the local authorities give you a list of solicitors, but they often don't put down solicitors that might be uh, ones that speak your language. Um, though most solicitors that have access through legal aid to language line and interpreters, you might prefer a solicitor that's more culturally aware, understands your culture, your risks, your fears, your um, religion, uh, as opposed to those that may be on the list. You do need to have a solicitor that is a family specialist. And a family specialist is one who specializes in children's law and actually can grant you legal aid and has just, uh, what's called um, special powers, devolved powers, so can give you legal aid instantly in case the situation turns into emergency court application. So that being said, 
what happens if you don't sign the section 20 and the local authority feel you are not cooperating, what powers do they have? So first of all, what should happen? is the local authority via the social worker should carry out an investigation. And that investigation should be quite in depth. And it's either done um, off their own back, or sometimes if you're subject to private law proceedings, and that's where a couple might uh, go to court to determine who should have contact or where a child should live, or on a specific issue to do with how that child is treated and they can't decide. So, or even uh, in relation to something such as an FGM order, where um, a report has been made that a child may be at risk if being taken out of the country or to visit certain relatives, it may be at risk of um, having a certain um, procedure done on them that is not needed, it is not consented to. So either way, even in private law, what could happen is a judge within those proceedings could sit down and say, do you know what, I don't know what should happen here. And with even with the court and advisory service, CAFCAS may also say, look, we need a more in-depth report and refer back to social services for them to carry out a more detailed investigation. Should that take place, then definitely you will be put under a lot more scrutiny a de very much so detailed assessment of you, immediate and possibly even extended family members could be undertaken. Once again, what's really important is that you cooperate. Sometimes, even as parents, there may be things you're not aware of that the investigation may disclose. And I understand that um, you may be guarded. You may feel that uh, people might not have your interests at heart. People have already falsely accused you up until that point. Therefore, you don't have confidence and trust. Once again, really, really important that you allay your fears with your legal representative and that you equally cooperate because once you don't cooperate, you again look very suspicious. You look like you have something to hide. And again, with legal advice, uh, you will be advised uh, with regards to the threshold of the um, investigation. There'll be an objective and professional eye to make sure that the investigation is being carried out properly and thoroughly, and anything that you consider to be omitted is put under the nose of the person who's going to prepare that report. Once the investigation is completed, a report is usually prepared, and that report is tendered to the court. Now, at this stage, what may happen is um, it may immediately allay some of the allegations or risks that were seen to be present to the child, or it may actually open up and show that you as a family are open to certain uh, risks such as exposure to domestic violence, risk of um, predators who may be around you, and it may disclose the truth about the allegations that have been made. Maybe you're just vulnerable and there's a welfare need within the family, a need for additional help, housing, um, financial support. It may just expose those issues. A decision may be made as to whether the case then meets threshold. Has it met the threshold for the local authority to want to go to court and seek an order? That order may be one that the child is at immediate risk of harm and there should be a care order of some sort. It may be one that there should be a, sh a supervision order where the local authority in conjunction with you actually takes over the parental responsibility of the child or there may be an order that you yourself, your parental skills are insufficient and somebody else should be considered and assessed to take over the parental responsibility of the child. So we're gonna take another break and when we come back, we're gonna discuss those court orders. We're also gonna discuss some of the other issues that may be present around certain public law situations such as alienation, fostering, and what you might need to do with regards to applying to vary an order if an order has been made uh, in relation to a child that's in your own care. See you after this short break.
Welcome back once again. Today we're talking public law, children, social services and local authorities, what you need to know. So we before the break, we spoke about um, investigations, what a local authority may seek from you, information, assessments, even if there's private law proceedings, the fact that a judge can still order the local authority to carry out an assessment to help make a certain decision. Now, what happens when you're in that process where the local authority says, look, we are going to proceed against you, we intend to proceed against you. From that moment on, you actually are entitled to legal aid. You may even be entitled to legal help which is a lower form of um, public funding that is eligible that you're eligible for as a parent in these situations. Maybe if you're a vulnerable person, you don't speak English as a first language, disability might be present that um, may um, lead you to needing further assistance in communicating with the local authority or social workers. But generally, it is when you are issued that PLO, the pre-proceedings letter, that you can automatically go to a lawyer and seek help. Once again, it might not be a lawyer that's on the list. I know a number of um, African and Caribbean firms that are not on certain lists, but can still offer you uh, family legal aid. Uh, so it's important that you do your own research, go to the Law Society website, find a solicitor that you're comfortable with so that you can get assistance uh, that you are, again, comfortable and confident with. But if the local authority uh, initiate proceedings, again, it's very important to understand what they may be going for. They may be going for a form of care order and right from the get-go, if they're not comfortable with you looking after the child or children while the court process is on the way, they may ask for an interim care order, which is right from the beginning of proceedings. They'd like to remove the child from your care because they don't believe that you are suitable or able to care for the child and the child is at risk. It's really important that every stage within the proceedings or every, every type of order that the local authority tends to go for has a legal threshold that they must meet. And simple allegations are not enough. There must be credible evidence to substantiate their allegation that the child is at risk of harm. So, um, it, and it must be, uh, again, also serious harm. So we, we, we do need to really um, make sure that when we're dealing with matters, you also understand that it's imperative that you get legal advice because lack of advice may lead you saying things off the cuff, uh, not realising they may be um, received by professionals in a different way. And also, you might not also appreciate the risk of losing your children. So very important that you actually, again, cooperate and, and are not transparent with regards to issues that you may have. Some people, again, are not transparent with regards to their immigration status, maybe a bit cagey, not be open about the fact that they are uh, maybe tolerating domestic violence because they are awaiting their leave to remain, or maybe cagey with regards to work or gambling habits and other things that, quite frankly, if they were transparent about, they might be able to receive some additional help. So if it's um, the situation where the local authority is going for immediate removal, it's very important that, uh, again, if you feel that the allegations can be allayed or you can um, reduce the risk that they say is present to the child, that you outline that and you make sure that your legal advisors are present and able to be aware of alternative family members, family carers, because those individuals may be, uh, need to put their names forward to be assessed to care for the child. But if there's not an immediate request for removal, an interim care order, other orders that may come about may be a supervision order. And again, that's where uh, the local authority work with you, set down some very clear arrangements uh, with regards to assessment or support that you may um, need to receive. They may also outline a regime where they uh, ask you to go for some training. Uh, to help you develop your parenting skills, or also to allay certain um, lack, uh, certain um, let me say areas where you're lacking as a parent. So it might be to help you understand issues around uh, protection from grooming, gang, gang culture. It may be around issues to help you uh, bond with your child more emotionally if they see that as something that you're lacking. Either way. 
if you're subject to a regime or um, a working arrangement under the supervision order, it's again important that you stick to the arrangement. Otherwise, what could happen is the local authority could go back to court to apply for a care order uh, and removal of the child. Again, if you know automatic care is found within your family, child may go into foster care if the care order is made in favour of the local authority, which means you as a parent uh, and your parental responsibility is diminished and the role of making decisions around your child's welfare, education, uh, medical uh, regime and access falls to the local authority. So it is absolutely really important that you understand once again, where things are. And where a child would go into foster care, it's where no immediate person is deemed suitable or better able to look after the child. And that might be a permanent decision. It might be a decision that you can come back and ch challenge. And if it's not a final order and the child has gone into care, then you may have to wait if it's an interim order, you may have to wait till the end of proceedings again to try and fight your case, put forward your position to show that you can um, care for your child and your child will not be at risk. But it is a final order. Then what may have to happen is you may have to let the order take effect. Come back and challenge it when you can show that you have changed your position, that it has substantially changed and you are now in a position where you're able to combat those areas where you were deficient or seen as deficient as a parent. And again, that can be a hard pill to swallow, but sometimes a parent might acknowledge, look, hey, I'm homeless, or hey, I'm an addict, or hey, I have to move out of this um, emotionally, emotionally unstable situation or uh, uh, make myself better from mental ill health, and then come back and also take my child or apply for the order to be um, varied. So what to do? If you find yourself in that situation, very important that you realize, again, as a parent, you are entitled to legal aid. You don't need to worry about whether it, you have a certain level of finances. It's, 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 a, it's an automatic right, really, if you are the parent. You may decide, you know what, I don't even want legal aid. I want to fund this because I have enough money and go for a certain level of barrister or solicitor. You must make sure the person is a family specialist. And again, you must cooperate. On saying all of this, I must also make a very important appeal. There is a lack of good social workers out there. So if you feel the, the calling to become a social worker, really important, you look at how you can qualify. It's important that we have social workers from different backgrounds, different um, um, professional fields. So nursing, um, teaching, you may decide to make that leap. We also have a lack of good family solicitors. So again, if it's an area you want to lean into and specialize, if you've worked with disabled children, come from nursing, again, it's really important you lean into um, the field of becoming a legal advisor because you're needed. <laughs> but if you have this situation, and um, again, if you feel the calling to become a foster carer or a special guardian, if you feel you can offer a child a home, a really big call out to you. Please, please look into the training that's available within your local authority. There is such a high demand for foster carers, especially those from black and ethnic communities. So that's all I have to talk about today. Thank you for staying with me. If you do need a family specialist, we have them at Obasaki Solicitors. Give us an email, give us a call. We'll be happy to help you info at obasakeyslisters.com or 0207-739-7549 or just Google Obasaki Solicitors and we'll be happy to help you. We have a family specialist there who is excellent and we have a team who will be able to support you and are so used to doing these cases and giving excellent outcomes and fully understand your stresses and emotional needs. So thank you for staying with me. See you next week.